<laughs> I am in Chiang Mai. Um, all of the gyms in Chiang Mai are closed and uh, I'm going to do just like a burn here in my hotel room. Um, this is something that uh, I actually would be doing at the gym anyway. I like to do really high repetition um, as a way of kind of ironing out techniques. Um, but also because just cool stuff happens when you do techniques at very, very high repetition. Um, because you're not trying to like isolate out particular movements and make them perfect each time, um, the repetition itself ends up like water over a rock, kind of like smoothing out the little inconsistencies. Something that Yo Kun Pan, the elbow hunter of 100 stitches, <laughs> 100 is repetition, um, something that he has really emphasized with me every time that I've trained with him is um, doing repeats on things in order to calibrate that movement. So uh, when my kicks are like overturning, he'll make me throw three of them because in order to throw three, you can't overturn when you're coming back. Um, so that's kind of, he convinced me in a very strong way um, how much high repetition, like water over a rock, kind of smooths things out. Um, this is not a full workout. This is not what I would be doing uh, on a normal workout day for myself. Um, I'm in Chiang Mai, Kevin and I are working. Again, all of the gyms have closed, so I really don't have normal training um, at my disposal. So I'm just doing what I can. Uh, and because we're living in a time of social distancing, uh, we're spending a lot of time in our hotel room, um, and I'm just trying to get um, not only a little bit of a workout, it's a little bit for like conditioning and staying fresh and things like that, um, but for me, when I work out, really what I want to be uh, focusing on all the time is getting the like muscle memory and technique uh, in my workout. So uh, I could be doing like, you know, burpees and jumping jacks and things like that anywhere in order to kind of get the fitness part of it. Um, but this is doing fitness and technique at the same time. Uh, this is not like a super um, organized plan kind of thing. I'm just going to be doing 500 knees uh, as per the way that Chmook Pet does them because that's what I feel like doing today. Um, and then I'm going to be doing 500 elbows. Tomorrow I'll do 1,000 of each. Uh, today I'm starting with 500. Um, and I don't know, I'm a little bit tired today, but seeing how I feel, I might add in some like shadow boxing and teeps and stuff like that. We'll see how it goes. It's a live video, so who knows? I'll be surprised as you guys are too. Um, I'm actually going to start with the elbows. Um, I'll alternate between. I think I'll probably do sets of 100. Again, we'll see how I feel. Normally I wouldn't be stopping and talking to anybody in between my sets, but just so that you guys know some of the things that I think when I'm doing stuff like this, in case you're going to be doing this at home or, um, I don't know, are interested in what I'm doing. Um, something that I'm paying attention to right now is that when Yo Kun Pan throws his elbows, he makes a big deal. He's the elbow hunter again. Um, he makes a really big deal about being really loose. And in Thai, the word for shadow boxing is chok rom, which um, means to like punch air. But when Thais translate it, they translate it to play with air, which I really like. So he's saying shadow boxing, but he's saying when you play with air, you really want to do this. He does not twist his feet like crazy like this when he throws his elbows, so I try not to. I try to like really come from the waist. And then I'm also borrowing from other trainers. So I saw Crew 10 uh, recently, who's an amazing uh, knee fighter, and he has this, what Kevin and I call the rhino elbow. So I was throwing that one in, which is this kind of like comes out kind of long. It's usually when someone's coming towards you. Um, and then I was working with Karahat, and Karahat had me switching stance. Um, I was going to be fighting, or I did fight, Southpaw Fighter. Um, and so this is their open side. And so like stepping and switching stance 
into their open side is where that one comes from. So I'm kind of like, I don't know, remixing the elbows of a bunch of different people. Again, I would not be stopping and talking in my own workout, but you guys are here. It's a live video, so we'll do this together. Um, I'm going to be alternating between the elbows and the knees. I think I'm going to do another 100 elbows, and then I'll go do the knees uh, and go back and forth, just because that's how it feels. holding a rope. <laughs> it's harder. I'm going to check if anyone is watching this or has comments. Hey! There's people watching. Hey, guys! Cool! <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. That's very, very cool. I'm just going to keep going.
case people aren't familiar with um, Diesel Noise burn knees in the corner of the ring, he, he has you go across your body. I'm doing a mix of like Chumwook Pet who comes straight up like this and Diesel Noise who kind of comes across his body like this. They trained at the same gym. <laughs> they're not the same height, but they're both knee fighters. Um, I really like Chumwook's Pet like bottom legs straight up thing. Doing a little bit of a mix of the two. Um, but when you see me repeat a lot on one side, Diesel Noy has this whole ethic that's like, when you get your knee in, you keep going until the opponent shifts position or you're forced to do something else. So basically, if something lands, keep landing that. So that's why I'll burn on one side. Good, I'm getting out of breath now. Ah, Alfred's going to start putting elbows in his daughter's training. That's cool. People who are trying to keep up, that's okay. Do it anyway. <laughs> do what you can. I'm just doing what I can. I'm like crazy in my hotel room. It's like the shining. Bring the family up to an empty hotel. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? I'm sweating though. That's really good. Uh, Dennis, you can land these knees basically. So when Chamuk Pet throws these knees, he's throwing them from like a clinch position. So you're locked up in the clinch like this and go boom. It's like an uppercut with your knee, but you're actually hitting with this part, like against the sternum. You have no muscle up here to protect yourself. So he aims for the solar plexus, but you can also get the jaw, especially when you're clinching with someone or you're starting to like land knees on the side, people will kind of like, in Thai they say boom, they kind of like tuck down. So that's how you can get the jaw, but you're aiming for the chest. And when you're doing the diesel noi knees that kind of come across your body, that's up into these top ribs here. They kind of go like that. <laughs> They're really nasty. <laughs> They're really good actually. Uh, Hussein asks, um, how much do you pivot when throwing elbows and knees? I assume you're talking about the feet. Um, something I said earlier in the video, maybe you haven't um, jumped in yet, 
but when Yokun Pan is doing his like um, playing with air elbows, he does not, you don't want to be pivoting your feet like this the way that you would in like boxing when you're throwing hooks and stuff. He keeps his feet more or less pointed forward. His knees have bend in them, they have flex, but basically everything's coming from the swing here and you have like a looseness in your shoulders. So that's how I try to do my elbows. Um, with Carhartt's like elbow that comes down like this, there's not a lot of pivot, it's kind of a floating I think of it as like a boat on a wave, like the boat kind of just floats up and down. That's what Carhartt's elbows look like, how he kind of raises and then bump comes down. They're, they cut really well, but they're not thuddy. So they're actually really like snick, snick, like bong. Um, but for elbows, you don't pivot a whole lot. For knees, it actually depends on how you want to do them. Um, Diesel Noy, when he's throwing his knees, he puts his foot out a little bit first before the knee comes so that the hip can follow it. But it's kind of like when you throw a kick, you step out first rather than actually, you're not actually pivoting on the foot like this because if you pivot on the foot, you've overturned and you can't come back easily. So you can start by pointing your foot out and bring the hip this way, but you want to be able to land back down. So Diesel Noy has kind of a like, I'm on a horse uh, feet knee stance for his knees coming like this. Um, you don't want to lean back. And then for Chmuk Pet, there's really not a lot of pivoting on the feet at all. It's a raise up. You're like coming up on your toe with those knees like that, if that helps. Um, Aaliyah, I can direct you towards uh, the low kick destroyer as a technique for how to block low kicks, um, but that's not my workout right now. <laughs> You basically want to block low kicks like with, with the hardest parts of your shin, like with your knee. You want to meet them with your knee. Uh, but you can look in the Muay Thai library or you can look in my technique blogs for the low kick destroyer. If you just Google Sylvie and low kick destroyer, you'll find it. But that's not what I'm doing right now. But thank you for asking. I have to remember what number I'm on. <laughs> uh, I think I'm on four for elbows. Four hundred. mention is that because I'm doing this against a wall I don't actually have an opponent <laughs> so in my head I'm picturing like where those are landing but when I burn I try to burn more on my left side because if I'm I'm orthodox I'm right-handed if I'm facing another right-handed fighter they're standing the way I am like this this is their open side which means that's my left knee so in my head because it's a wall <laughs> I'm picturing it's an orthodox 
opponent. And so I want to drive my left knee. That's the open side and that's a better knee for an orthodox fighter. If you then picture that an orthodox fighter, when they get hit by the knee, they might change their stance. And then you can go with your right. Um, or what decent boy really likes to do is like set up a bunch of front leg knees. And when the opponent turns, that's when you have your like bah, or if they start to slump and they're no longer really in a stance, they're kind of like squared. That's when he lands his power shot. He gave a really good speech at the gym. Sorry, I have to get a drink. He gave a really good speech at my gym to the Thai boys. Um, he was talking about how fighters nowadays only want to land their power shot. And so they basically become a 50% fighter of what they can be. They put their weight on their front leg because they're always loading up for their power side. But back in the day, people were more 50-50 and they would start out with their front side in order to open up the possibility for their backside, which in Western boxing, everything starts with the jab, right? Because the jab is opening up for that power right. You don't get a lot of fighters who are just constantly like slamming forward with the right, as per Diesel Knight. Hi, Ellen. Hey, Loma. What they got, Loma? That's it for the elbows. Two more on the knees. more of the knees. If you guys have questions, let me know. Uh, Philippe is asking about teeps. When, <laughs> normally I would be doing teeps also. Teeps are really important for every style of fighter. As a Muay Thai fighter, I'm coming forward a lot, and so my teeps actually need to be kind of short because I'm actually approaching my opponent and teeping at the same time. I'm not throwing teeps in here because I like to teep an object, and I don't want to teep the walls because <laughs> you leave marks on them. So I could maybe go outside and teep some trees or something, but the way to throw a faster teep is to be aware of where your weight is when you throw it. So a lot of people, um, if they're gonna use it defensively, you want to time when your weight comes onto your back foot so that as you're moving back, it comes out kind of automatically. I'm a forward fighter, so when I come forward, I'm timing it for when my, when my step is there. So if I'm coming forward, my teep is getting ready on the step. Basically, if your teep is slow or if, you're, if your timing is off on your teep, it's either because you're doing too many movements, like you're chambering it too much first and then bringing it out like this, 
rather than kind of a like one step long motion, or it's because you have to shift your weight first. A lot of people when they're blocking, they have a hard time with their block because they've thrown their kick and then their weight comes back onto that leg, and then you have to reshift your weight in order to bring that block up. So in order to expedite that process, when you kick and you come back, you leave your weight on that front foot and then it can come up. It's similar with the teeth. Just some advice. I don't, know, I don't know if that answers your question about your teeth, but it will make a teeth faster. Oh, something that Dieselnoy does when, he's, when you're on a bag and you're doing these knees like this is that when you knee and you come down, bring your foot behind your other foot and you've created a little bit of space even at a short distance to have more power in your teeth, uh, sorry, in your kick, in your knee. You go here, down, like this. So it's a little bit like the question about how much you pivot on your feet, is if you, if you have a stance like this and you come back a little bit behind yourself, you're creating more space for that knee. So these are my last 100. stuff but I'm not going to do those on the live stream. Um, I didn't feel like doing this at all so <laughs> thank you guys who have been on this live stream. Thank you for asking questions that kind of turned into a like open workout slash technique vlog which is kind of cool. I've never done something like that so thank you to my patrons who make it possible for me to be here and to inspire me to keep creating content <laughs> even when I'm kind of shut away in my room. So thank you guys for watching live. Um, I will try to answer more questions that I see as they come after, and um, I'm going to be working out on my own for the next like 10 days at least, so check in. I'll be doing more of these, and thank you guys for watching. <laughs>